Well, welcome to a new Harry's Garage video. And today's car is this, a Ferrari Roma, this new front-engined V8 twin-turbo-engined Ferrari that is there to celebrate those 60s elegance of cars like the Ferrari Lusso and I suppose 275 GTB and Daytona. They all had this elegance about them and Ferrari are keen to get back to that design language. And this is their first go with it. Such a good looking car, I think, when you see it. And I'm all for that. Two plus two accommodation inside, but it still packs 610 horsepower, serious sort of car and priced at 170,659 to be precise. So less than the F8 Tributo. But what I'm keen to find out is how does it fit in the range? How is it compared to the Portofino, which is their folding hard top car? Can the two sit together? And how dynamically does this car work with that you know, aggressive engine? Can it control the horsepower with its new eight speed gearbox? Let's go and have a closer look. I think the most distinctive look of this Roma is this new front end treatment and this grille, which is sort of holes in the bodywork rather than a sort of metal grille we've sort of got used to. It's very color sensitive, I think, having seen this car in lighter colors as well. It doesn't look quite as good. I think this, this is um, Roma blue, this color. I think it actually suits it very well. There's also a lot of tech on this car and that's what, this is a sort of giveaway. It's got all the lane departure, the emergency braking functions, the adaptive cruise and all that sort of thing is on this car. They've thrown all the electronics. You wait till we see the inside as well. Everything new tech is on board with this car. Moving round, um, the Michelin Pilot Sport 4S tires on this one, 20 inch wheels, 245, 35 by 20 CCM brakes, if we expect from Ferrari, all their cars have it. This is one of those Ferraris you cannot have the shield on the side. They deem this car being a sort of GT car. It's not appropriate for this car. You never used to be able to get it on the Ferrari Lusso of the 60s and that sort of thing. Come down the side. I mean, it's such a silhouette. I mean, it does shout a little bit Aston and Jaguar, but this is what a two plus two coupe sort of ends up looking like. But there's an elegance to it, a sort of no crease, no hard Audi creases on the side or anything like that. Rear tyres are up to 285, 35, 20s, carbon brakes. So very distinctly, it flows into the back. I love the way they've done the rear lights that just sort of pop out the bodywork here. Very elegant, looking like jewels as they term it in the press back. No spoiler at the back. That is actually here, electronically controlled. You have no control over the spoiler. It's all done by the Manatino. It decides when it wants to have that. So yeah, big quad pipes on this Orama, which are actually, interestingly, when I read the press pack, straight through, there is no rear silencer on this car. And I think that helps the design because it means they're not having to package a big exhaust sort of in between this bit. And it's why the rear overhang is so tight. Then we come around here, convent, little boot, electric control, quite deep. It's sort of, you think, oh, that's it. And then you notice there's a whole lot of space down there and the rear seats flip down. If you're trying to put a longer, you've gone down to B&Q in your Ferrari Roma, where well, you can fit a nice long piece of wood in it, which is very useful. Now, let's have a look at the front because the engine is pretty special on this car too. Well, I can't get over when I first looked under here was how far they've got the engine back in the chassis, right back there. All that is just air cleaners and various dressings, etc. But right back in the chassis, the, 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 the twin turbo um, V8, what I love also is there's no engine cover. We've still got the real engine. These are the intakes here. Great to see on the car. A bit of structure coming in here to strengthen this great big units here. Um, very clever, great to see, beautifully laid out. They still want you to look at the Ferrari engine. So anyway, what this car's all about is the driving. So let's take it outside now. Always, always lots of bleepings, isn't there, with modern cars, all oh, steering wheels coming down as well. Quite like the key, it's quite, quite a sexy thing. It's not the yellow shield, it's a sort of gray shield. I don't know if that was an option and this is sort of lever on this side. And what presents you is a very different looking Ferrari with an iPad, the dreaded iPad, but in uh, portrait mode rather than landscape. 
a strange gear thing here. It looks like the, they've tried to copy the sort of five-speed gearbox look. Ferrari Roma on the dash. Weirdly, the engine start button is not a button, but just sort of lipped, lit up on this screen here. I can press that, all comes alive. Warning, danger of ice. Oh dear, well, it's not looking very good. But yeah, you see all this, it reverse manual auto, all sort of controls on there. Right, the fan's gonna take off. I don't want the fan to take off, so I'm gonna I'm gonna try and calm it down. Can I calm it down on here? Yes, I can calm it down, that's good. Everything is controlled via this screen, you soon learn with this car. So temperature, I have to go up and down on this. Is it gonna work? No, oh, there it goes. Yeah, it's a, oh, it's a little slower, probably because it's whatever temperature it is outside, minus one is it or something. Um, yeah, so it does all that on there. God, there's so much to take on wheel looks as I expect it's still got the yeah it's still got the change up lights yeah there they go still got the change up lights in the top of the wheels that's good to see five position Manatino switch now so I go down to green and I have a comfort I go from wet comfort sport race god this is slow yeah it doesn't keep up how weird it goes oh it gets very upset when you put ESC off Ooh, lots of red flashes on the dash so anyway what else is there to say on here? Well, just, yeah, the packaging. Yeah, good duck sized bins in the doors. I, I just want to get to know how the, all this tech sort of works. Kind of like that, and the vents there. They've always got a double um, dash readout as well, passenger readout. I, and the options on this car, they aren't as bad as some of the Ferraris I've had in some of the press cars. So 170,000 list and we end up with this car at 222,969 as tested here. The sort of chunky sort of options, well there's surround view which I think is what if I select reverse and it will put lots of cameras up there. Yeah, there we go, all the cameras come up. 3,556, oh do shut up. Let's just put it into auto. There we are. Let's see if that all. How can I get a oh, touch of fun. Does does like to make a sound, doesn't it? Uh, Seven thousand one hundred for the special paint, the blue metallic. I wouldn't say it was that special, but uh, color lever inserts doesn't say where. One thousand three hundred forty-two. Three thousand for uh, Magna Ride dual mode suspension. Well, I thought that would be standard, but there you go. Carbon fibre steering wheel, LEDs, 2,880. Advanced front driving camera. We've got a camera that drives, is it? 1,181. 4,800 for the two-tone lever interior. I mean, it's beautifully trimmed, but I'd hardly say it was two-tone. Carbon fibre dashboard inserts, these sort of bits, 2,688. I really wish sometimes I was in the carbon fibre business and I could charge 2,000. 688 for bits like this. What else have we got? 1,100 exterior sill kick in carbon fiber. Aluminium brake calipers. I don't think they mean that. I think they mean aluminium painted brake colors, silver aluminium brake covers, or can you have steel and uh, brake calipers? Anyway, 1,296. Back radar and blind spot detection, 1,500. A ADAS full package. If you're a farmer, you know what ADAS is, but I think it's the advanced, the driving, and the, all the cameras. That is 5,184. Enough. Now, this isn't going to be a normal test. I would normally say, now, I'm going to drive off onto my favourite roads, and you'll join me later. That isn't the case here. I am now driving back up the farm, because this car is going on a transporter, and it's going off to Goodwood. You might notice it is a bit wintry outside, and this car would only be supplied on winters. And I said, no, I don't want to test it on winters, uh, winter tyres. So I'm going down to Goodwood to drive some cars down there that are actually on normal summer tyres, and maybe get to drive this car on Goodwood track, I don't know, but anyway. So you will join me later, but it'll be down at Goodwood. There you go, you now find me in Roma down by Goodwood and um, I don't mind it around here because I sort of know the roads around here very well having tested a large number of cars during the festival and things like that and Rolls Royce being close and I'm just tickling into a little village just close by the circuit near Fordwater and I've, I've actually got it in wet because it has been grotty down here today 
why we'll be down here. But I just want to, you to just listen. If I pull up to this junction, I don't know if you can hear that, but there's a deep bellow resonance. It's like, it's like a, dare I say, a, a sort of a Civic, a Honda Civic with a big pipe on the back or an Astra. I'm very surprised at the sound this car makes at low speed. I don't know why it's 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 not it sounds louder than the F8 I hit it the other day. I mean it goes it go quickly goes away, but just at Tico, just going through town, your initial impression said, well that is not a very Ferrari sound. The architecture of the two sort of cockpits, the passenger side, driver's side, this swoop here, it was nice. They've got the controls on the wheels are better. Well, they've had plenty of goes at it, and um, just the indicators that they're a much bigger unit and they feel more substantial, have a nice satin feel to it. This haptic sort of control on here does strange things. You suddenly get it to work. It makes strange noises like that. I'm gonna have tires up there so I can see what's happening with tires. I'm just gonna bring it out of that. I'm going to comfort and I'm gonna to go to sport. It's not raining. I need to know what this car is all about. I'm also gonna put it into manual. Eight speed gearbox now. New gearbox, first introduced of the SF90. Used to be seven speed. Quite a clever gearbox, as you'd imagine from a Ferrari. A dry sub gearbox of, of all things. Rather than having a wet sub, it's going to get past this guy. And uh, there is plenty of performance in this car. They're so clever on the engine mapping with these Ferraris and this new uh, turbocharged engine. So they limit the torque in the lower gears and you don't actually get the headline 750 Newton meters until you're in seventh or eighth. So right at the top, but don't worry about it because the mapping is masterful. And you're still got around 600 Newton meters, they were saying, in the lower gears. So we're not we're not short of horsepower, and we're certainly not short of torque with this engine. I'm right, just going to slow it up. This is a big, long, straight road, just to give you a little sense of what this car is. I'm in second, 16 miles an hour. Well, there you go. You've got to have your wits about you. That was in sport. I could put it into race get the slip angle working as well but I don't think this is the place to do it but the first lesson in uh, right driving El Roma it's chuffing quick and it's two-wheel drive and it very quickly overloads those tires but um, I did have a chance to try this car on track and I think it might be a good idea just to show a little bit of what happened on a very damp a very cold Goodwood now a little bit of track action at Goodwood. This is the um, new press demo and today is a Friday and this car only arrived on Wednesday so uh, it has 343 miles on it at the moment but yeah it just just seems worth giving it a go and I unfortunately forgot my helmet from home this morning, left in a mad rush this morning. I'm going to show this up. Um, so I'm having to wear a liner and a Goodwood helmet, but we're going out and just see how we get on with this. Yeah, even over those bumps, you can hear it spin up. All you see than I expect is an initial thought as I go around here. This hasn't got the sports exhaust, this is a standard exhaust. And I'm surprised just how much noise it's generated inside. It's funny this corner, no name. Right at the top of the circuit. Another double apex, one of my favourite corners in the P8. And you can add some corners one way, I just feel it starting to understeer around there. Just locking up at the front there, just 
braking for the chicane. It is proper greasy out here. We've added, it's 353 miles now, so we've added 10 miles of running in type motoring. Well, not quite, but um, yeah, I'm looking forward to taking it on the road next. But it was better on track than I expected. There we go. The car I was driving on track actually had the new Michelin Pilot Sport 4 S's on. I've noticed this is on Pirelli P0s which are a bit behind the curve, unfortunately. It's a bit of a shame the car I'm driving isn't on the 4S's. Steering is typical light Ferrari, sensitive, pointy. I, I like the steering on, on Ferraris. You have, to, you have to key yourself into it, but after not very long, it does look, it does feel good. I'm not quite sure what this car is recording the film now. It's gearbox. We just play tunes on it, it's such a quick gearbox. Transaxle sits in the back. Car is a little lighter than um, you might expect actually. 15 uh, 50 kilos, I think. I'll flash it up now. I'm just going around here. Yes, it's full of all sorts of the latest information. Right, this is a bit twistier down there, let's just see. So it's yeah, it doesn't like me cutting a corner or something like that. Carbon brakes are standard on this, of course. Loads of power there, working well in these wet conditions as well. Downhill, greasy bends, not a great recipe, but um, do you know what? I'm quite happy to push this car down here. It feels very controllable, very easy to read. Quick steer in this thing. <sighs> Quick car. I love the way once you've wound up this turbocharged engine and you're using those top revs, it's just like a normally aspirated engine. So many people say, oh, the turbo just feels like a uh, normally aspirated engine. This one really does. I'm gonna have to find how to turn that off. It's just when I go close to the middle of the lane in a grotty day like this to miss the water out, it's getting upset. Oh, modern cars for you. Can't get over how dark it is. It's one o'clock. It should be dark like this, but um, we have chosen a pretty gloomy day to be driving this car, but it really does test the dynamics of the car out if you take it out in conditions like this. So I'm not that bothered. It doesn't mean I can't quite use the top end and race and muck about with it. It's, it's more aggressively fast than I was imagining it, I have to say. But I suppose it, it has got 620 horsepower, below that sort of 90 horsepower down, isn't it, on the uh, F8 Tributo, same engine. It's that torque figure, it's that 750 newton metres of torque that is this, what this car is all about, really. Twistier up here, see how we get on up here. It's an aggressive car, 
don't think on that gentlemanly exterior and smooth lines this is a, like a GT it's hyper um, the horsepower the weight the power delivery the torque all see to that well it's probably time to summarize this car and what what we like and what we don't like about it well let's start with the dislikes that sound at lower revs annoys me I'm su really surprised that it's that boomy I haven't noticed it don't notice it in the F8 Tributo but I very definitely notice it in this car and then there's the dash the centre console bugs me it's not Ferrari I don't know why they have to have the badge on there it's ugly it doesn't look classic it looks thick it doesn't look like something from Apple or Delicacy that I expect from Ferrari so it really bugs me and then the gear control they've tried to make that every time I put my hand there they've tried to make it look like a gear change so that's sort of a slotted gear change I don't know it's slightly tacky in the use of chrome here I just don't think suit the car at all they haven't got a volume knob you can't turn the volume out without going into the menu and then you have a little slidey thing on here and it's sort of imprecise oh just work I just want to put the volume up ah! it's too much tech none of it really works as smoothly as it should Another thing I love about Ferrari and their controls are the big paddles for the gearbox. Proper paddles on the steering wheel. Work a treat. Oh, that tactic coming on. I don't need to do voice recognition. Yeah, little things come alive when you're not expecting them in this car. Oh, modern tech. And then on the exterior, yes, it's elegant, but it's hyper color sensitive that cut out grill that eggshell grill at the front you it sometimes grates more than it should but it's very color pacific in the darker color it looks better in the lighter colors it looks a bit odd and it's so annoying because the, the rest of the car is so elegant I'm not quite sure if that was the right way to go if we flip over to the likes well the looks <laughs> get that color right and you just look at this car and it's a thing of beauty I've always enjoyed the beautiful Ferraris it used to be Pinafarino used to pet them and then they seem to go overly aggressive and there's no real beautiful car Ferraris really until this turned up you know 599 started the aggression I suppose after the 575 there was always an elegance there and they seem to have rediscovered it with this car another like is just the power and the performance and actually when you turn it up here the aggression I really hadn't expected that would I prefer this 911 Turbo S it's an interesting dilemma I think when I got outside and looked at it I was think that, that you would never tire the looks of this I think the 992 the Turbo S can control its power better so it's a bit more accessible you've got to be very confident to be able to tap in the top end but then it's like when you do you have got the controls to do it but it, it, it is hyper with that two-wheel drive and that torque delivery oh, it's, it's it's a ferrari i suppose so yeah i do like that to me this car feels like remember the maserati gran turismo glorious looking car wonderful thing it never quite had the horsepower to go with the looks it was very much gt this is like that car but almost with too much power too much firepower too much torque beautiful to look at and then this wildness about it 
I think it's priced quite well at 170. They haven't over-egged the price. I cannot see how this sits in the range with the Portofino. What's the Portofino? Suddenly looks very old-fashioned now with this. Will they do a convertible version of this? Well, that's up to Ferrari, but I can imagine a soft top convertible of this would be a very desirable car. And there goes those haptic bloody switches again, just turning on voice control. I love the way they keep reinventing themselves with these sort of cars. It's nothing like a Lusso, you know, it hasn't got the sound of the V12, but boy, has it got the performance of the V12. So there you go, there's Ferrari's latest model, the Ferrari Roma. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have, well, please keep watching, keep subscribing. More videos coming along very soon.